Welcome everyone uh, to today's deep dive, and we're gonna get into a topic that is both a scientific marvel and a global health imperative. The quest for an HIV vaccine. Yeah, it's a challenge that spanned decades, and uh, today we're gonna unpack where we stand with all this, and we're gonna be using an article from the Science for Africa Foundation to kind of guide us along. It's titled, Are We Getting Closer to an HIV Vaccine? And it was published in June of this year. You know, I think this deep dive is particularly interesting, uh, just even the fact that sub-Saharan Africa really bears a disproportionate burden of this epidemic. It accounts for nearly 70% of the world's HIV positive population, which I think just really underscores why finding an effective vaccine is so crucial. Right. A vaccine is considered the most promising way to not only stop the spread of HIV, but to potentially eradicate it completely. Yeah. And, you know, given that immense socioeconomic impact of HIV AIDS in sub-Saharan Africa, a vaccine could be truly transformative. So let's get into the specifics here. The article mentions broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs, which seem to be generating a lot of excitement in the field. Can you kind of break down how these BNABs actually work and what makes them so different from the antibodies that our bodies just normally produce? So what's fascinating about BNABs is their ability to target and neutralize a wide range of HIV strains. Something that traditional antibodies struggle with HIV is notorious for its ability to mutate so rapidly, making it a moving target for our immune system. But BNABs, however, they can latch onto these conserved regions of the virus, essentially those parts that remain relatively unchanged despite mutations. And this makes them incredibly potent weapons in the fight against HIV. So essentially, these are kind of like super antibodies that can adapt and keep up with HIV's constant evolution. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And what's even more exciting is that researchers have recently succeeded in inducing these BNAMs through vaccination, which is a pretty big leap forward. That is definitely promising. But the article also mentions this long and difficult journey of HIV vaccine development. There have been quite a few trials that haven't really panned out, which I imagine has led to some skepticism in the field. How do scientists view those past setbacks and how are they informing research today? The past failures, while disappointing, have actually been really valuable learning experiences. They've helped to highlight just how complex HIV is and the need for these innovative approaches. For example, early vaccine candidates focused on triggering the production of traditional antibodies, which you know, we now know aren't as effective against HIV. So those setbacks really helped to refine our understanding of the virus and shifted the focus towards more promising avenues like BNABs. Exactly. And while antiretroviral therapy, or RT, has really revolutionized HIV treatment and it's turned it into a much more manageable condition, it's not a cure and it doesn't completely eliminate the risk of transmission. So that's why this pursuit of a vaccine remains absolutely vital. The article mentions the shift towards smaller scale trials, which honestly seems kind of counterintuitive. Why focus on smaller trials when the goal is to create a vaccine that can benefit millions? Wouldn't that actually delay the entire process? It's actually a strategic move. These smaller trials are designed to rapidly test multiple vaccine candidates and just quickly identify the most promising ones. You can kind of think of it as a more targeted approach. It lets researchers fine tune the vaccine design before they move on to these larger scale trials. So it's really about maximizing efficiency and increasing the chances of success when those larger trials eventually happen. It's like doing a series of these very focused experiments to pinpoint the most effective strategies. Precisely. A good example of this new approach is the mRNA HIV vaccine trial that's actually currently underway in Africa. This trial is a collaboration between the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, the Scripps Research Institute, and Moderna, and it's leveraging the same mRNA technology that was used in the COVID-19 vaccines. So they're kind of applying the lessons that we learned from recent vaccine development breakthroughs to the challenge of HIV. Absolutely. And this trial is designed to assess the safety and efficacy of the mRNA vaccine in inducing those crucial BNABs that we discussed earlier. And the initial results are expected sometime in the coming months, which will provide some really valuable insight for the future of vaccine development. It sounds promising, but how does this targeted approach address the challenges we've seen previously in those large scale trials? Like what specific improvements does this new strategy offer? Well, one key improvement is the ability to test multiple vaccine candidates simultaneously. Previous large scale trials often focused on a single candidate, which made the process much lengthier and riskier. With these smaller trials, researchers can evaluate several approaches in parallel, which increases the likelihood of finding a successful candidate much sooner. So it's like casting a wider net. You're exploring a range of possibilities rather than putting all your eggs in one basket, as you say. It's exactly. Additionally, these smaller trials allow for more flexibility and adaptability. So if one approach isn't really working out, 
Researchers can just quickly pivot to another and save valuable time and resources. And this iterative process is absolutely essential for navigating the complexities of HIV vaccine development. It seems like the scientific community is taking a much more agile and iterative approach, similar to what we see in software development. It's this constant testing and refining and adapting their strategies based on the data that they're gathering. Yeah, that's a really great analogy. The quest for an HIV vaccine is a very dynamic process, and this new approach kind of embraces that dynamic. Yeah. By incorporating that flexibility and a willingness to learn from both successes and failures, researchers are significantly increasing their chances of actually finding an effective solution. So despite all of the challenges that we've talked about, there is a sense of renewed hope in the field. There's definitely this cautious optimism. The advancements in BNAB research and this shift towards smaller, more agile trials are definitely positive signs. But, you know, HIV is a formidable opponent, and there's still a lot that we just don't know. And this cautious optimism is understandable. Some might say that these small-scale trials are just too limited in scope. What are some counter-arguments to that viewpoint? Like, how do these trials contribute to the bigger picture of finding a global solution? Well, it's true that the smaller scale might seem limited, but these trials are not meant to replace large-scale trials at all. They're a critical stepping stone. By identifying the most promising candidates early on, researchers can really focus their resources and efforts on those that have the highest chance of success in those larger trials. So they're essentially laying the groundwork for more effective and efficient large-scale trials down the road. Exactly. And these smaller trials also have a vital role in building capacity and infrastructure in regions like Sub-Saharan Africa, where the need for an HIV vaccine is most acute. It's about empowering local scientists and communities to be active participants in the quest for a solution. Precisely. And that's essential for ensuring that any successful vaccine is accessible and actually beneficial to the populations most affected by HIV. This approach sounds like a win-win. It's fostering scientific progress while also promoting global health equity. Absolutely. It's a reminder that scientific advancement is not just about technological innovation, but it's also about social responsibility and collaboration. It's about recognizing that the quest for an HIV vaccine isn't just a scientific challenge, it's a human one and it requires this multifaceted approach that considers both the scientific complexities and the social context. You know, one thing I find pretty insightful about this article is uh, you know, the author Dennis Chopra. He's not just writing about HIV vaccine development, he's actually a medical virologist who's actively managing a program for the Leadership for African Research Networks at the Science for Africa Foundation. Oh, wow. So he's really bringing this firsthand perspective to this very complex issue someone who's deeply involved in the fight against HIV, it definitely adds this layer of authenticity and urgency to the discussion. Absolutely. And, you know, his perspective really highlights that crucial role that organizations like the Science for Africa Foundation are playing in all this. They're fostering research collaborations, they're providing training, and they're advocating for increased funding for HIV research, specifically on the continent. So they're essentially building a scientific infrastructure in Africa to tackle the epidemic head on. It seems like a localized approach is so essential considering the diverse strains of HIV and the unique challenges that different populations face. Exactly. A one-size-fits-all solution is probably not going to be very effective. For instance, <laughs> you know, a vaccine that works well in North America might not be as successful in Sub-Saharan Africa just yeah. because of the prevalence of different HIV subtypes, mm -hmm. genetic variations, and even environmental factors that come into play. It's a good reminder that scientific solutions really need to be tailored to the specific needs of the communities they're meant to serve. It's not just about finding a vaccine, it's about finding the right vaccine for the right people. Precisely. And yeah. that's why it's so encouraging to see clinical trials being conducted in Africa, taking those unique characteristics into account. It's a global problem that requires a global solution, but one that's also sensitive to the nuances of local contexts. This localized research seems to be a key theme in Chopra's article. Yeah, it underscores the importance of empowering African scientists and institutions to really lead the charge in developing solutions for their own communities. It's about building sustainable research capacity and fostering that sense of ownership over the entire process. So it's not just about these scientific breakthroughs, it's about empowering these communities to be active participants in the fight against HIV. And this brings up another point that Chopra mentions. He emphasizes that while the road to a vaccine has been long and challenging, there is reason for hope. Yeah, he points to the advancements in broadly neutralizing antibodies and the strategic shift to those smaller scale trials as reasons for optimism. But at the same time, he's also very realistic about the challenges that still lie ahead. 
Of course, HIV is a complex virus, and developing an effective vaccine is a monumental task. So where do we go from here? What are the next steps in this quest? Well, Chopra highlights the need for continued investment in research, both in terms of funding and human capital. He stresses the importance of attracting and retaining talented scientists in Africa and giving them the resources and support they need to make groundbreaking discoveries. So it's about creating an environment where innovation can really thrive. And it's not just about scientific expertise, it's also about addressing the social and economic factors that contribute to the spread of HIV. Absolutely. A successful vaccine needs to go hand in hand with these comprehensive public health strategies that focus on prevention, education, and access to treatment. You really gotta tackle the epidemic from all angles. So it's this multi-pronged approach, combining cutting edge science with a deep understanding of those social and behavioral aspects of HIV transmission. This brings up a question I've been thinking about. Given the complexities of HIV, do you think a vaccine alone can actually eradicate the epidemic? Or is it just one piece of a much larger puzzle? That's a great question. And I think it's important to remember that a vaccine, even a highly effective one, isn't a silver bullet. It's a powerful tool, but it has to be part of this comprehensive strategy that addresses all of the facets of the epidemic. So it's not an either situation. It's about integrating a vaccine into the existing prevention and treatment programs and addressing those social determinants of health. Exactly. Yeah. A vaccine can drastically reduce the number of new infections, but it's not going to eliminate HIV overnight. We still need to focus on educating people about HIV transmission, promoting safe sex practices, and ensuring access to testing and treatment for those who need it. It's about creating this supportive environment where people can really make informed decisions about their health and well-being. And it's also about addressing the stigma and discrimination that still surrounds HIV, which often prevents people from even seeking testing and treatment. You're absolutely right. Stigma is a major barrier to effective HIV prevention and treatment. It's essential to create a culture where people feel comfortable talking about HIV and seeking help without that fear of judgment or rejection. It's about recognizing that HIV is a health issue, not a moral one. Mm -hmm. And it's about treating everyone with dignity and respect regardless of their HIV status. Absolutely. We need to move beyond that fear and prejudice and embrace this more compassionate and understanding approach to HIV. You know, this focus on human dignity keeps coming up in our conversation, and it really ties back to the ethical considerations of HIV vaccine development. Yeah. As we're working towards these innovative solutions, we have to do it in a way that respects the rights and well-being of all individuals. I agree completely. Ethical considerations should be at the forefront of every stage of vaccine development, from the research and testing all the way to distribution and access. That includes ensuring informed consent, protecting the privacy of those participating in research, and ensuring equitable access to the vaccine once it actually becomes available. Exactly. Ethical vaccine development isn't just about scientific rigor, it's about social justice and equity. Mm. It's about making sure that the benefits of scientific advancements reach everyone regardless of their background or their circumstances. So as we continue on this quest for an HIV vaccine, it's not just about finding a scientific solution, it's about doing so in a way that upholds those shared values of compassion, fairness, and respect for human dignity. Well said. I think this really brings us back to the heart of Chopra's article. It's a call to action for this renewed commitment to scientific innovation for collaboration across borders and for a deep sense of responsibility to the communities that are most affected by HIV. It's a reminder that science isn't just about knowledge, it's about action. It's about using what we know to make the world a better place. And in the case of HIV, it's about working together to create a future where this virus no longer holds humanity back. It's pretty amazing when you think about how much progress has been made in HIV research, especially in recent years. Yeah. But it's important to remember that a vaccine is only one part of this whole picture. Yeah, exactly. We can't just wait for some scientific breakthrough to solve the complex social and behavioral stuff surrounding the HIV epidemic. We need to keep working on those issues, too. For sure. And, you know, Chopra's article really gets at this by talking about the need for these really comprehensive public health strategies that work alongside vaccine development. Right. So things like education prevention programs, access to testing and treatment, those things are all super important, even if we do have a successful vaccine someday. Absolutely. Even with a vaccine, we can't forget about those other interventions. They're still going to be essential. It's kind of like we're creating a safety net, right? One that supports individuals and communities on all these different levels. I like that. That's a great way to put it. And, you know, even if we do develop a highly effective vaccine, it doesn't magically make the stigma and discrimination around HIV disappear. 
That's such an important point. Stigma can be a huge barrier for people. Yeah. It prevents them from getting tested or treated or even talking about HIV. How do we even begin to dismantle that stigma, especially as we get closer and closer to a vaccine? Well, it's complicated, huh? but education and just open, honest dialogue are key. Mm -hmm. We need to make it normal to talk about HIV. We have to challenge the misconceptions and really promote empathy and understanding. It's about changing the whole narrative, right? Moving away from fear and judgment and creating a space for support and compassion. Exactly. And that means addressing those social determinants of health, too. You know, things like poverty and inequality and lack of access to health care. All those things can make people much more vulnerable to HIV. So it's bigger than just science. It's about creating a social environment where everyone has the chance to stay healthy and protect themselves. You got it. And that kind of brings us back to the main point of Chopra's article. Mm. You know, this call for a multifaceted approach that blends scientific innovation with social responsibility. So we can't forget that this fight against HIV isn't just a scientific endeavor, it's a human one. Right. It's about using science to make a real difference in people's lives and at the same time addressing the social and economic factors that fuel the epidemic. And we have to acknowledge the strength and resilience of the people living with HIV and the communities that support them. Their stories and experiences should guide our efforts. It's a good reminder of what's at stake here. So before we wrap up, I want to pose a question to you. Given everything we've discussed, what are your predictions for the future of HIV vaccine development? Does all this new information make you feel more or less optimistic? You know, I think I'm cautiously optimistic. I think the scientific advancements we've seen and the growing focus on ethics and social responsibility those are really encouraging signs. I feel that optimism too. A vaccine might not be right around the corner, but it does feel like we're moving in the right direction. And even if a vaccine proves difficult to achieve, the research and knowledge we've gained along the way has helped us in other areas of medicine too. It's like this quest for an HIV vaccine is pushing the boundaries of science as a whole and leading to all these amazing discoveries that benefit everyone. Yeah, exactly. And it just goes to show the power of human ingenuity and collaboration when we put our minds to something. Yeah. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave our listeners with this thought. You know, we've explored the science, the challenges, the hope around this HIV vaccine. But at the end of the day, the future of this epidemic really depends on all of us. We have to stay informed, engage in these conversations, advocate for change, and support the people who are working to find a solution. We all have a role to play in creating a future where HIV is no longer a global threat. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll be back soon with another exploration into a topic that matters.